All right, my next guest up tonight, as I said, is a special treat. He's known as one of the pioneers in Latin hip hop, freestyle, and rap. He's also the CEO of Fever Records and Fever Enterprises. Let's give him a late night welcome for Sal Abatello. My man. What's going on? Thank you for coming. Hello, good. All right. Me and you have been talking. I, talked, I called you last year, and then you were so busy, and then I reached out to you months later, and here we are. You got some resume. In 1976, you started uh, Fever Enterprises, and all areas of the music business, from your record label, to bookings, to promotions, to concert events. Why don't you give us your story, how it all started for you? Well, it started in the Bronx. I was born in the Bronx, and uh, I was around a musical family. Mm -hmm. uh, my father had bars in the South Bronx, so I was always around Motown and R&B music, and being in a bar, you know, with the jukeboxes back in the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we opened up a club in the Bronx on Gun Hill Road, and the bands, we had bands there, so I was always around entertainment, so I became the bartender when I was eight, 18, right out of high school. I didn't go to college. That was your first one. Was that called the Playhouse or no? Uh, what was the Playhouse? That was the first disco. That was, a di that was after that. Okay. This was more of a, uh, a live band back in the early 70s. You know, Chaz Palmolari played there in a band. Oh, Joe really? Pesci played oh, in the band. Frank Vincent was Frank's with them? Frank Vincent okay. was there. So, you know, I was the bar, the bandstand was behind the bar. So I'm a bartender, so I'm back there with the band. So it was a great time, and then disco started knocking that out, and little by little in the mid-70s, mm -hmm. DJ took over, and all the bands started becoming passe. Yeah. So I went and opened up the first disco in the Bronx on uh, Williamsbridge Road. It was uh -huh. called uh, The Playhouse. I noticed an upcoming, you know, urban, black, young generation coming up after the Motown people that were discovering their own sound and their own place, you know, here in, in New York. Mm -hmm. And I kept hearing people talking over the music. So we opened up this disco in the Bronx called Disco Fever in 1977, but it was an R&B club. Mm. And um, at the end of the night, this guy, Sweet G, would get up and he would do rhymes, nursery rhymes, and I was watching the audience's reaction. And he had complete control over the whole nightclub. If he told them to say, say ho, oh, the whole place say ho, oh, throw mm. your hands up. I'm like, wow, well, how great is this that this guy is dictating and making the whole place feel as one person? You know, like all complete strangers uh -huh. now or acting together and interacting with, you know, looking at each other and smiling and talking. And it made such a great atmosphere. So I approached him. I said, what is this? He says, oh, it's called, uh, you know, emceeing and rapping. And I said, well, where can I see this? So he said, let's, you know, who's the biggest one? He said, Grandmaster Flash. I went into the park and I met Grandmaster Flash and he was doing a, a park day hooked up to the light pole. Like in, uh, this is like in 77. <laughs> And I saw the reaction to the kids back then. Now, the drinking age was 18. Yeah. So you had, you know. Those were the good old days. Yeah, the good old days. When <laughs> you're sneaking in when you're 16 and yeah. 17. Uh, so I, I convinced them to come into one night. I said, I'll make you a star if you come into the club. Because mm -hmm. nobody's going to see you here in the park. But I'll have a location. And it's a top notch. I have a great sound system. Brought him in on a Tuesday, first night, 700 people. And from there on, I just took over the club and got rid of the disco. And started putting in hip-hop DJs every night. Sweet G and Hollywood and Yeah, I, all those names. Reggie I remember Wells. all those back in the day. I know my mother, so we were watching a commercial on TV, and we were thinking of a name for the club, and she was like, let's call it Disco Fever. And I was like, Disco Fever? And I said, oh, yeah, Disco, yeah, Disco Fever. Perfect name. The logo is great with the record, the yeah, thermometer. Yeah, yeah. Tied all of that in. And, uh, you know, it's, it's world famous. It's known all over the world because of the rap that came out of it. And then they made the movie Crush Groove, in 85, yes. 86. Hollywood came to the Bronx. Yeah. And you pretty much played yourself, right? I and they played myself. They I had a tryout for myself. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> they, they featured the, the fever in there, but didn't they? Yeah. Pretty oh, yeah. Much. It was filmed in the fever. And it definitely uh, documented that hip hop, you know, was brought outdoors, indoors, and virtually was introduced to the world in there. We went People Magazine, Time Magazine, Rolling Stone Magazine. All of them. Every week, because in the 80s, 82, 83, People were so interested in hip hop, what it was, where could they go see it? So luckily for me, I was the only one, you know, and place held a thousand people. So all every week we had Japan in there, Germany videotaping. And, really? And that's why Fever is probably even bigger than Studio 54 around the world. You know, so here I come in and 
and they're like, hey, who's this white dude coming into our neighborhood? And I'm like, you know, I was born in the Bronx. This is my neighborhood. I just didn't leave. So I'm going to stay here and, and build it up. So at one point, I opened up a skate fever. I yes, opened up you were a place the first called, guy to do the roller skating, right? right? We had a disco downstairs. I started Sugar and Spice, Pepper Salt. I opened up a place called Games People Play. And then we, had, then we started the record company in 81, 82. So I was employing about 200 people at that time. And then, you know, all the customers knew me. And I had to, like, you know, a lot of times they had no money to get in or for a drink. And, mm -hmm. you know, you had to, like, go with what was going on and take care of everybody, you know. And I started the Rutgers Basketball League in 79. Mm -hmm. Still going on today, 37 yeah, years later. Yeah, the same later. guy, the partner from one of the disco bands. What was that, the Disco, disco Floor? Four, he yeah. just passed away last week. Uh, Me, Greg, and Mr. Magic. Sorry Unfortunately, about that. Mr. Magic passed away. He was on BLS. And we started this league in 79, and it's 37 years later. Puffy had teams in it, Jay-Z, Fat Joe. I played in the first game. I won the first the, two MVPs. Yeah, you won, yeah, you won two awards two years yeah, in a row. Yeah, two MVPs. Yeah, I could play ball. Oh, yeah? White boys could jump, yeah. Actually, when we opened Skate Fever, there was an abandoned park across the street where drug dealers were in there for like seven years. And when they heard I was taking over the skating ring mm -hmm. and from the last owners, uh, they, the community came to me and said, C what could I do about the park? So... You know, I, I said, well, I'm going to try because I knew there was like a gang in there. So, you know, we had a pretty tough crew. All my bouncers were ex-cons. I only hired people that didn't have jobs. <laughs> exactly. You I know, if you came out of jail, you can't get a job. Nobody would hire you. So I hired them as security. Thank God none of them ever went back to jail. And we went into the park. It took about a month. Mm -hmm. We uh, took over the park from the drug dealers, and re I rebuilt it, put in basketball courts and, yeah, man. Ten you know, and handball courts. And we had a big uh, party. Uh, and we had sent the kids uh, on trips to Playland and Rye Beach and everything, so it was nice. And um, we started the McCombs Youth Association over there. Didn't you get an award from that, from the, uh, from from the mayor? Yeah, from the uh, mayor and the Bronx Bowl president. Good for you. Sal, I have to say, I admire your philanthropic work and the, the amount that you gave back to your community that you came from a lot because it's something that I tried to do when I was Miss New York. Uh, now almost two years ago, um, but I, I know that you say that you talk about the United Negro College Fund. You gave actually a great deal of money to that. I think it, I read over $70,000, yeah. mm -hmm. and I read that there's many other organizations that you gave to as well, so I, I believe you're continuing your, your work in the community, so what are you well, doing up well now? for the last uh, seven, eight years, mm -hmm. uh, nine years, one, I had a foster kid named Erica Rome, and she lived with me, and uh, unfortunately, um, you know, she, w she had, was aspiring to be a radio jock, and through my connections and through hard work of her being the door girl at all my parties and stuff, we got her an audition in Orlando, and she became a radio jock, which was her dream. Within two years, she was the number one jock on the station. The station went to number one. It was a hip-hop station in Orlando. Unfortunately, she had to move, and we were heartbroken that she had to leave, but, you know, this was for her. You know, this was her dream. Unfortunately, uh, the day this show went number one, she went to Florida, uh, Miami, to celebrate with her friends, and she got killed in a car accident. Oh, so, uh, uh, and that was, she never even got to see, she was on the cover of a magazine that day. Of course, the station went number one, so she never even saw the magazine. So, uh, in her honor, we started the Erica Roman Foundation, which really started off for foster children. So we started, uh, we had a, a big memorial for her in the Bronx, and all her, we had like 500 people there, singers, all the freestyle artists came and sang. And the girl that started with was another young lady, 17, Vivian Rivera, who uh, I was an, uh, inspired to, be, be, she became a singer. And she worked, uh, she sang with one of my singers, Louis Damon. She met him and she became in the band. So she put this uh, foundation together with me. Unfortunately for me, the first day of the softball game, we had a celebrity softball game three months after Erica passed, and she was diagnosed with breast cancer, and she died a year later. Ah. So both my two best friends and the two kids that I mentored and grew up. Uh, so I put her picture on there. So now it's the Erica Roman Foundation, but now we do cancer also. So we have a big cancer uh, benefit we do every year, uh, year here in Staten Island at Roller Jam. Let's get to, how did you get introduced to a lot of these acts with the freestyle acts when, once everything started turning around? I mean, so, so when the hip hop, when the Crush Groove came out, mm -hmm. it blew up. I mean, now I'm like, wow, I'm going to, you know, because hip hop is not going around the world. So the fever... It was open for 10 years, so the last two years it kind of f was falling off. Everybody was going to the city, they're going the to Roxy's. And the club scene was changing, right? Yeah, they're going to Webster Hall, they're going to all these uh, danceateria. So they're going to all these trendy Manhattan places. But now the movie's coming out, so I said, wow, I'm going to get a second shot, you know? Unfortunately for me, the movie brought so much attention to the club, it got closed up for no cabaret license. Get out of here. Yeah. Wow. So I'm sitting in the park now, the club got closed up, they padlocked it. So I heard about it, years. but I didn't know the full story. It, it, it destroyed the neighborhood because all the money and the jobs and, and the income, the 
that I was bringing into the neighborhood and all the charity work and all the people I was helping. And uh, so I'm sitting in the park and uh, I see this, these kids breakdancing, these Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican kids breakdancing, and I see this DJ again, like Deja Vu. And who is it? Little Louis Vega. Uh, Little and Louis. I was like, oh, damn, Latin hip hop. So I went over to meet Louis and met him. And luckily for me, we had a club in the Bronx, a Latin club called Voice, uh, Voices. And Ralph McCarter, legendary Ralph McCarter in the Latin business, was the promoter there. And he left the club to go to the Palladium in the city. So luckily for me, the club went from 1,000 people to zero. <laughs> and uh, I told my father and his partner, I said, look, I found this stuff in the street. It's going to be the next hip hop. I reinvented freestyle in the year 2000. Uh, it was dead for like about eight, nine years. It died in 93, 94. And um, when I did this, uh, I did my 20 year anniversary and 4,000 people showed up and everyone was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. So then we realized, well, the groups are not really pulling by themselves. They can't pull, yeah. they're not worth that much by themselves. But when you put them together as a unit. Oh, you got a great package. And you put 10, 12 groups together. So I fell onto that again. So, and then when that took off and then they started, they said, Sal, you think we could go to venues, sit down venues. I said, it's ready now, because the audience was ready. They were out of the club scene. And now they were ready for sit-downs. Now we're doing, you know, we did Radio City, we did Madison Square Garden, we did Coney Island, we did all these. Just did the St. George I saw yet? Yeah, we did St. George at Staten Island. That's a great build that you're doing. Now listen, uh, Sal, I so much your time, but I want you to talk about the Legends of Freestyle documentary that's on. How did you get involved with Steve Stanulis and you becoming a producer of the, uh, the documentary? Well, I'm good friends with Freedom Williams and uh, a guy named uh, Hanson, an uh, artist named Hanson who had a big record out. Um, mm -hmm. And they, I guess they spoke about me to him to reach out to me, he reached out to me, and uh, so it was a great idea. And, you know, I reached out to all the groups, and me and him worked great together. Great guy, a really good guy. And he had a vision to put it together. And, you know, people say they're going to do something, but Steve did it. No, Steve is a good friend. And you know what? Uh, when me and him met, we just clicked. Steve is the guy. He tells you he's going to do it. He's going to do it. It came out great. It's about an hour and a half. A lot of artists are in it. Uh, most of the big artists are in it. Lisa and Freedom and George and TKA's in it. Suave, well, Naomi, Let me Cover interrupt Girls, you. My that? good friend Suave, he was on the show. He's a dear friend. He told me to, to say hello. But he goes... Make sure you ask Sal about him performing now, because Sal gets up and, and performs on the stage. Now, what do you do? You, what do you do when you go up there? So uh, what happened was uh, about 15 years ago, I was doing the Copa, and uh, the the MC got drunk and he couldn't go on stage. And I never went on stage, you know. So I had no choice but to go on stage and host. So from there on, I said, you know, somebody said, you know, you should keep doing that, market yourself, because a lot of people know FIBA, but they don't know you. Mm -hmm. You know, they know you of you from the movie, but. So I started going on, and now lately I've been doing a little routine. I come out with a Run DMC outfit. <laughs> we do a little DMX, and what I do is I try to make the concerts like a club party, mm -hmm. and I did. I transit. We got comedy going on. We have me and Speedy co-host, and we have our routines going on, and then and we get the we interact the audience with the party like we did with the with the fever with hip hop. Well, Sal, I wish you all the best and many more years of success, and I hope me and you uh, cross paths and uh, hopefully. I'm around. If you ever need me, I'm always looking to uh, bust a move, as they say. <laughs> can you bust the move? I, not really. Yeah. I, 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 I don't think so. I can play the drums, but the cows come home. Well, we, we've been putting drummers on stage. So no, I know. Go. I met the guy you had on the stage at St. George Theater. He did an excellent job. Oh, that's Angela's uh, son, uh, Peter Gazi from the I could the do casino. all of that. I'd have to practice he it. He rocks. But. You know, we're trying to open doors for other people to, you know, look. What's your legacy? Everybody can make money, but your legacy is what who came out of your camp and what you created for other people so they could be successful, too. And everybody needs an the opportunity. There's not a lot, of, a lot of guys like you anymore. You're definitely old school. And oh, you know it. Sal Labatello, everybody. Old school is no school. Have a seat. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Hello. Hello there. Bread, please. <laughs> I've been waiting. All right, Sal Labatello. Check him out. Go on his website, and uh, he has a lot of good events. Oh, before you go, Sal, you got some free tickets. Yes. And I got, listen, I got a bottle, me and Jamie, of Late Night with Johnny P, organic wine. Nice. This says to my Aunt Terry, no, this ain't yours. There's alcohol in it, right? <laughs> yeah, of course, this oh. is good. To I want no organic. No, no, this this is. Nothing healthy. This <laughs> is very good for you. Take it, and in good health, Sal. Yeah. But tell us. Thank you, thank you. Tell everybody what you have for the uh, So, uh, May 20th, we have a, uh, Big party in uh, SOBs in Manhattan. Yes. Legendary SOBs that used to do rock and roll. Doors open at 7. We got TKA. We got Lizette and yep. Naomi and uh, Raquel and Collage. It's going to be a great show. 
My boy Andre is uh, the promoter, and I'm going to go there and co-host it with him. And we're giving tickets away. So how are we going to give these tickets away? Anybody that wants tickets, just put your name on a piece of paper when you leave, and I'll make sure Sal gets them, I'll get the tickets, and then you'll go. Nice. If you get the tickets, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right? You think? Yeah. All right.